Oh, I miss my old chair. Anyway, guys, hi, I'm Captain Foley. It's Trek Yards. How you doing? And I'm Connor Cockins. That might be a running theme in this episode. We'll see. Because we're looking at chairs. The most exciting thing in the whole galaxy. We're not looking at chairs. That's an oversimplification. We are looking at the chair. The TOS captain's chair. Um, and comparing it to the Discovery Reimagined TOS captain's chair. Well, pre-TOS <laughs> Disco Prize chair. Fair enough. Sure. Yes. There's also there's lots of asterisks with the Discovery Enterprise. It's like it's not actually TOS. It's not actually Cage. It's not actually original Canon visual content. It's not at, you know what I mean. It's all these little asterisks mm. of it's its own thing. Although oh, well, Stuart, I'll ask you. I think it's fair to say you have some experience with captains' chairs in real life. Yes. And this design in particular in real life, as do I a little bit. But mm -hmm. I think you blow me out of the water a little bit. I'll give a brief explanation mm. of why I would say that. <laughs> well, um, we have been, of course, to James Coley's sets in Ticonderoga, which has uh, an exact replica of the captain's chair that we've both sat in many times um, with no wallet in your pocket because you can't have anything in your pockets when you sit in that chair because it's one of the original, um, the, the 1960s style. I forget this, the chair they used for the middle part. Most other chairs just fake that part, but this one actually has, which is fine. Um, so legitimately there's that one and also my friend um andrew kitt has the a tos captain's chair that he got from uh one of the sci-fi museums that he actually purchased and we took to london comic-con last year so i have great experience with that one it's got all the lights sound effects all the buttons and everything all do something different um so i got quite a few opportunities to sit in that during that weekend and it's uh I'm kind of the custodian for that one. We repainted it. We, you know, take care of it for Andrew. So, yeah. So unlike many other things to talk about, you are, are close to an expert in the physicality of this particular piece of Trek history. Uh, okay, sure. I'll take that. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree. So then we saw one discovery. Although I remember when we actually did our initial review, you said, oh, I could barely see it. Because obviously you watch episodes so quick, it's quite a fast-paced episode and on the bridge anyway. And so I've gone, I've created this graphic now with pretty much every view, you get a really good sense of it. And obviously on the bottom you've got the cage version and TOS, pretty much the same, but subtle differences. So Stuart, as the man, what do you think of this Discovery, Enterprise, alternate visual continuity, reboot, Cam's chair, between these two eras? <laughs> asterisk, asterisk. Yes, so let's be fair, I'm actually quite happy and pleased with the restraint they showed in the chair's <laughs> uh, design. Um, from the front and um, sort of the side, uh, it's pretty much exactly the same look, mm -hmm. just at first glance. There are, of course, subtle differences, um, but overall, it does have that original look. They did not go over the, overboard like they could have. Um, like we saw, like Discovery's chair is, of course, styled after this this type of chair uh, but quite a bit different um, so I kind of expected something like that for Enterprise however like I said quite a bit of restraint they've actually done it very they've done it justice for sure oh, um, it's funny that you said you expected it to be something else it's like you expected them to not <laughs> use the visual continuity yes. when we obviously like, we know what that chair looks like 100% no holds bar three seasons multiple spin off showing it like there is no question what that chair looks like it's the fact that you thought they were going to change it is just a sign of Discovery's classic thing of, eh, we know better. Oops. But speaking of changing it, they have, of course, added their own little tweaks to it, which are quite evident from the back of the chair. Um, the arms extend around the back and have, like, a, a arc or a semicircle behind the chair. Um, so they did put their own spin on it, but at first glance, from the front of that bridge, it just looks like the standard TOS captain's chair. So i got to give them a lot of props for that. Uh, again, when you do things right. So, well, what was your first thought when you saw the chair? Oh, it's actually the chair. <laughs> That's a good thing to think. It, it, you know what I mean? It, it is not rocket science. You show the Enterprise, you show the Enterprise. Um, and yeah, you're right. The fact that it's so similar is astounding. Um, you know, whoever whoever's in the art team was either told, don't do, you know, don't follow instincts, make it like it should look like. Or they were like, I actually like this one piece of Trek history. I'm going to replicate it. Um, well, that said, you know, the e even though it has its place in history, the original TOS chair is not sleek. It's very of its time. It could easily be, you know, you look at any of the few, like the Enterprise chair, for example, an XO one all sleeker curves, much more functional, much more nice. That said, 
We're both sat in the TOS chair, really comfortable. It's just gonna, Very like, comfortable. It doesn't look necessarily comfortable, but it's actually super comfortable. It's just there's so much mass for no function. So I think it's a very unrealistic design unless you give them all bells and whistles. Like if you had a shield generator in there or some other things, you know, you know, simple things like there's a, there's a good reason for this massive bulk. Um, it's a force field harness that you don't see. It's an invisible seatbelt. No, in yeah, seriously. Activity. Yeah, I mean, give them that and it's fine. Um, but I do like the fact that the, the armrest is slightly tilted in. That probably is more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. like that. There's actually displays in it. Again, easy, obvious change. Um, I have no problem with the circular back piece. It's it's both subtle and obvious, but I don't think it changes the feel at all. And the fact they still got wood paneling, um, both you know the same and more. I, I think it does a tremendous job. Um, and it's not even as as sleek down as what I would make it. Well, I think they probably made like prototypes in like VR because I know they do some VR testing stuff, and they were like, if you keep uh, thinning the sides, it'll feel like a normal chair. They probably have a certain width of. Eh, we can only take it this far before it stops looking right. I think they went that route, um, so I might have you know, ruined it by doing a bit more. But I know I think it's it's great. It's probably it's as good as we could have hoped for. I think that's fair to say. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this this one graphic you have with all the the chairs here, it's I actually didn't realize there was such a difference between the, the cage style chair and the one from TOS. It's not very subtle, or it's not very noticeable at first. It's very subtle. Of course, you got the gooseneck, which is quite obvious. Uh, nice simple addition or subtraction, as the case may be. Um, but if you look at the front of the uh, the front of the chair itself, um, in the cage version, it's you can see the standard chair and how they've built like this thing around it. That's more integrated, of course, when you get to the TOS one, which I didn't know was a thing before this picture. Oh, yeah. So thank you very much, Samuel, for that. I didn't <laughs> even see it till you pointed it out. <laughs> yeah. You can see that it was changed between the two, even oh, yeah. though it looks very similar. Um, so that's really cool, actually, and an interesting uh, thing that should be pointed out. Because, uh, yeah, no one saw it till now. <laughs> oh, I'm sure somebody else saw it. So no, I thought uh, I think they did a fantastic job with the Discovery one. Uh, yeah, like you said, the, the angled-in arms is kind of a nice touch, and of course, you knew they would modern up the displays or the uh, controls on the chair itself. Um, I'd like to get a closer look at those uh, controls, of course, but I'm, I'm sh we don't know what the next episode holds, so we'll see. We might be revisiting this topic soon <laughs> as we get more views. So, um, But yeah, I'm, I'm excited, and I got to give Discovery uh, Props Department some credit. Um, this is one iconic piece of not only television history, but sci-fi history, and definitely Star Trek. This is, this is Star Trek gold as far as... Um, memorabilia goes so kudos to them for maintaining that original look and and honestly this is and we've said from very early on a visual reboot is you take the same shape so from a distance it looks identical as soon as you get up close you notice the differences and you replace the things obviously outdated like lack of touch screens lack of button you know physical buttons more digital buttons like you do those things and maybe you sleek down the curves a la into and darkly they turn the multi-angled uh, railing on the bridge into one big curve actually kind of helps the shape no one noticed it until you point it out but it actually adds a little sleekness to it this is an example you know if if they were to have done this first this captain's chair and the art designer was like oh that's perfect that's exactly the tone we want for this show same but updated then we as the fans would be totally for it because this is a right on the nail of the head and it's just adds more disappointment to the the previous art designer season one and then so it's the same art design season two because they just have the same props. But it's also encouraging that maybe they're learning in season two and in season three, maybe we'll get even more of this um, and and progressing towards a, a truer visual update of TOS rather than a discovery verse with some stuff in it. Well, like I said, I am looking forward to seeing... Nine and a half out of ten. Nine and a half out of ten. Wow, that's impressive coming from you. Me? I also will give it a nine and a half out of ten. Because <laughs> that's the score I was thinking of if, I, if we were going to score it. Yeah. It's like, um, we always do for episodes. I feel like this is a... Yeah, might yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, again, looking forward to seeing more of it. Hopefully see the controls a little bit better in the next episode and a few other things. Maybe you can see what it can do. Maybe it's... I'd like to see, you know, some kind of functionality there, him talking to somebody. That'd be neat. Well, Pike will be in the chair next week. 
he'll be doing things. So that we're going to see, you know, although that's they do a lot of out of focus stuff. So we don't get as much sense of the bridge and such. But we'll, you know, I went through a lot of shots trying to find a shot and two that worked. I, I found him. I'll, I'll find him again. <laughs> you already good at that. We know that you guys are fans of Captain's Chair, especially the TOS one. So, guys, let us know what you think about this redesign. Is there anything you would have changed? Is there something you don't like? Or is it pretty much spot on? By all means, let us know in the comment section down below. We always love hearing from you. And speaking of, you can join our social media uh, on Facebook and Discord and join the conversation with the Great Trek Yards community where we have discussions about this very thing all the time. All the links for those are down below. Um, so click them, come join the community, and hang out with some great people. Um, and in the meantime, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to share the video around. And also click the notification icon, because there's going to be a lot more. Like we said, we might, get, might revisit the chair once we see more of it. And, of course, we have a lot more topics uh, and of discussion all the time. And you guys want to get notified, so click the notification icon. It helps us out, it helps you out, and you don't miss anything. Great summary, Stuart. I try. It's not like I. It's the first time I've ever done it, and you know, I'll just. I, I wonder. I wonder how long it would be if you did a supercut of every single outro for every single video. Remember when we used to script our outros? Yep. Anyway, speaking, speaking of outros, of it's your turn. <laughs> Patreon. Uh, we need your financial support to help this show going. You know, take some of that time, effort, money, even to make these shows, to talk to you every single time, put new graphics on, and all these things. Uh, and do the fancy shows with the ship, ships and the graphics and all that. Just, it's a spectrum of stuff we do on the channel. So if people want to support the channel, what we do, then a couple of great ways. One time donation at trekkills.com if you've got an extra fiver from something. You pass birthday. it along. Yeah, there you go. And it'll go towards show costs. You want to support, support on Patreon, the monthly donation service. So it's like a Netflix or a Hulu. You love what we do. You want to give a little bit each and every month. Um, that's perfect. Or you can join our weekly lives. We do a couple each and every week. Um, talk about lots of different topics. A lot of breaking news stuff. Often just... There's news. Ah! Talk about breaking news. Um, that's always fun. And you can support us directly that way by having your comment question heard by a super chat, which you can put sort of any amount of money. And again, that goes directly into the uh, production of the show, helps us keep going, and it's kind of another backbone of the show. So lots of great ways to keep getting us coming to every single week because we do keep coming to every single week. And it takes money, effort, and time. And if you can support even a little bit, it'll mount up. So thanks so much. It also takes love. You didn't put love in there. Well, they all love us. With default, right? Well, no, we love them. That's why we take the time and effort to do the show. Anyway, guys, until next time, I'm Captain Foley. And I'm Connor Kungs. Bye, guys. Bye. I do still miss my old chair, but the new one's all right. They did a pretty good job. <laughs>